The IM5000 is an inverted microscope at a reasonable price. It is an excellent microscope for universities and low volume labs requiring advanced illumination techniques. It is ideal for metals as well as advanced materials such as ceramics and composites. The features of the IM5000 include bright field illumination, dark field illumination, and differential interference contrast illumination, all at an economical cost, which makes it a very versatile instrument. The IM5000 metallurgical microscope is an inverted microscope. That means a specimen is facing down towards the objective lens. It doesn't require any planarization of the sample to be in line with the optics. The IM5000 uses both bright field and dark field objectives. The standard set of objectives that come with the system include a 5x, 10x, 20x, 50x, and 100x objective lenses. There's also differential interference contrast that can be added with the Namarsky prism. Some of the other features include the on-off switch, coarse focusing with the larger knob, fine focusing with the smaller knob, light intensity, 10x eyepieces, digital camera can be added. This knob here will change the light path from 100% to the eyepieces to 80% to the eyepieces and 20% to the camera. There's also a number of filters that can be added on a turret in the back here. And we also have an XY control of our stage. The IM5000 metallographic microscope is a very useful microscope. It has a variety of different types of illumination systems, including bright field illumination, dark field illumination, differential interference contrast, and polarized light. The image that's shown on this screen here is bright field illumination, which is the most common illumination technique in metallography. The background will be light and the features will be dark in bright field illumination. By pulling out this lever here on the microscope, now we get to dark field illumination. And in this case, what we've done is we've changed the optical path so now that the, the background is going to be dark and the features are going to be bright. Differential interference contrast uses an analyzer and a polarizer. Here's the polarizer here, and then here's the analyzer here. So what we do is we adjust the analyzer so that we are near distinction, which means that the image is going to be mostly a, a blacked out type of image. From that point, what we do is we add the Namarsky prism, which slides in here. And you see with the Namarsky prism, what happens is that we get more of a three-dimensional view because we're shifting the phase of light just slightly. And not only that, but we also bring out a variety of colors. So by rotating, the prism, we can see we can get a wide range of colors in our photographs as well. To optimize the IM5000, we want to align the bulb, set the field diaphragm and the aperture diaphragm, as well as defocus with the condenser lens. To optimize the light through the optical system, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the light bulb is aligned. Now the light bulb, by pressing these two levers here, will allow it to pull out. So what we want to do as a rough measurement is, uh, is we want to have this aligned to about the center of this lens here. Now in many cases that might be sufficient enough, but if you really want to optimize the light, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take off the lamp housing and remove this cover plate here. And what we want to do with the light on low intensity you can see we have the ground glass slide in place with a ground glass filter in place. And we want to make sure that the light is centered on that. If it's not centered at the low intensity, you should be able to touch the bulb for a few seconds. But what you want to do is you want to rotate that or align that so that this is lined up pretty much in the center. That will give us the optimum 
like bulb adjustment going into the system. Adjusting the field diaphragm. By pulling out this lever here, we can reduce the iris on the field diaphragm. Once we have that reduced, we can now center it. So there's a knob here and a knob here. So let's go ahead and turn these until we have it centered. And after we have it centered, what we want to do is we want to push the lever back in so that we're just outside the field of view. This will reduce any stray light within the system. To align the aperture diaphragm, what we want to do is we want to use the 50x objective and remove one of the eyepieces. So looking down the eyepiece and using a low light intensity, what we want to do is we want to adjust the field aperture so that as we move the iris in and out, it moves equally. What I find is the best way to do this is to actually focus onto the diaphragm so that you can see the edges of the diaphragm. And then when you move it in and out, you can see the edges moving. And if you need to make an adjustment to align it, there's two set screws on the side of the lamp housing, one on each side. And by adjusting that, we can center the diaphragm. After we've optimized the light path, what we want to do is we want to now defocus or diffuse the light. And we can do this a number of ways. One is we can add a ground glass filter or rotate the turret to the ground glass turret. We can also use this condenser lens adjustment here. So by pressing this in, that will defocus the light or make it a little bit more uniform. The next thing we can do is we can adjust the aperture diaphragm to optimize the contrast. And you can see here that we actually are now bringing out features in the structure that we didn't see before. The aperture diaphragm is very useful for higher magnifications and 